Uh, continuing the tutorials about now a starter motor. Now, if you go to the to the block diagram, it's a little easier, but they leave some things out. Over here, if we go to the component level, it's a little more clearer. So, we always start at. I start from finding this part, the starter motor itself. Then I go back. We know ignition key involved. A computer involved but in this case there is no computer involved so it's going to be ignition key it's going to be a relay and it's going to be a starter now there's a solenoid also obviously two solenoids a hold-in and a pull-in which most have on nowadays now let's look at it from this viewpoint let's go step by step in this picture by the by the block diagram we don't see much we see over here right here here's the starter we see one wire black wire the thick one that thick one goes to the starter the black one now we know that's not enough we know that in order to start the starter you need more than that you need the you need to activate the solenoids now let's come down here through this big fuse 175 amp fuse through another fuse that's 40 amps and we hit the starter relay at pin 30 terminal 30 of the relay so that's some information that we have about the starter the thick wire and the relay right we know we go through an ignition switch we have to be in start position for the starter when we go in starter it doesn't tell you any information. All it tells you is we have to go to another part of the diagram. And if you go down here, it goes to other parts which have nothing to do with the starter. So, well, let's start from the component level one. Now, my, my objective here is to teach people how the components work. Once you know how the components work, you will understand how to analyze. First step is first. First, we have a relay over here. In order to activate the relay, which side do we go to? We go to this side. We have to activate this, then this will be activated. So let's go back up to the diagram to this. So fine. Now, we have this fuse saying hot at all times. What does that mean? That means regardless what position I'm in, I should always measure 12 volts here, 12 volts over here. It goes through a connector. See this little thing over here? Through a connector and the orange wire. Goes through another one. And it's red now. So it went from orange to red through connectors. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. But... If I'm in the off position, is current flowing through this fuse? Remember, I measured 12 volts here, 12 volts here. Is current flowing? No. You might think it is, but because there's voltage drops, no. 12 volts here, 12 volts here. When we put this in start, what happens? Current flows through the fuse, through these wires, through this ignition switch. And you'll feel it in the ignition switch when you pull a lot of current. You feel it. We go through this, start, now we go through another connector again. Yellow, another connector, and then it's still yellow. Same color. 12 volts here. We didn't lose anything from here to here. Why? We didn't lose any voltage. Why? That's important, because we're just going through wire and switches. 12, 12 volts here. We're going now, we're going through another wire. Another, I'm sorry, another wire. Another fuse, 10 amp fuse. This is 20 amps. This was 10 amps, the ignition fuse. Those are the, those big fuses that you see, maxi fuses. So then there's a smaller rated fuse. Where is it? On the hood fuse, fuse block. Where is it located? On top of left front fender. So we're chasing the yellow wire into this fuse. When we come out of this fuse, how much should we measure? 12 volts, if it's good. What color, what color wire? Purple. We went from yellow into it. We're coming out as a purple wire. Right? Again, through a connector. 
You see over here it says MTAT. What does he think it stands for? Manual transmission and automatic transmission. If you're going manual, you're following this route. Here's the clutch pedal position. You know it has something to do with manu uh, manual. If you're going automatic, you're going through this one. So let's follow. Let's still follow it, right? Now we're at a purple wire. We're going this way. AT automatic transmission. We're going down the right path. We're going to another connector. What else is new? We're coming into the switch. This switch tells us we have to be either in the park or neutral position to start the engine. We're coming out again. Another connector, which is now purple and white. So probably has a white stripe on it. So purple and white. We went from purple to purple and white. You have to keep track of the of the color wires. You have to. Now, because they, as you see, they change. This also went from purple to purple white. Purple, purple white. Again. Now, we're gonna go over here. Automatic transmission means it's in C2. It'll be it'll be connected to C2. If it's manual transmission, it'll be connected to C1. Right now, what color wire? Still purple white wire. Haven't changed. We need this to be activated. We have current going through here to ground. Fine. This will be activated. What's going to happen after that? This will be pulled in. Now we have the other circuit working for us. Great. Now we're doing something. Where does the current come from that? Go back up. Trace yourself back up. Back probe if you have to. This one. This was the black heavy wire. The red wire. Go through here. This big. This red wire. Big fuse over here. Where is it located? Right of radiator. Right. The fuse holder is is. Is there not the fuse? The red wire, still 12 volts. We didn't lose anything through this wire. A red wire, still red. Through a stud. And it goes through another fuse. And it goes to terminal 30 on the starter relay. And then it will go to terminal 87 as a purple. Comes out red, in, comes out purple through a connector. Let's look if that's the, a block diagram is true. What did we say before? What did we say? We said we're going through the through these one fuse, two fuse, to terminal 30 of the relay. Is that true? Well, here it is right here. One fuse, two fuse, terminal 30. We come out 87. We come out 87 and a purple wire. Purple wire goes to the solenoids goes to these solenoids to activate the solenoid, the windings, then this will be pulled in. Now you have that thick wire, the orange wire, coming in, that, that 200 amps, 300 amps, whatever you want. Remember in the winter, you're gonna pull a lot, of, a lot of current, a lot of current. Therefore, the starter motor will be activated. We started out from this, now we, we, the first thing that you do is find this one. The ignition switch. Two or three things should come to your mind. Starter. Ignition switch. Relay. Computer. In this case, we didn't have a computer. But mostly we do have a computer on newer cars. These are GMs. These are old, old, old car, actually. And we have that thick wire. Black thick wire goes to heavy, carrying that heavy, heavy current. You can see it's thicker. That should come to your mind. Now, let's say I want to jump something. I was asked, how do you jump something? You have to be so careful about this. If you jump this one, if you're jumping this, you're jumping the computer and a lot of components. You're going to see destruction. You jump. When you want to jump, you want to jump 30 to 87. You look for the switch part of it. How do I know this is the switch? If I have four terminals, how do I know? How would, how would I know? Well, I put my my probe from the from the multimeter on any of these points. There's four terminals inside. Let's say I go to this point. I'm looking for the for the connection to the fuse or the B plus. So I put my probe here. I go to the B plus. No connection. Why? Why? Goes to ground. I'm gonna put my my probe now at point 80, 85. Remember. On the relay itself, it has the symbols to show you. But I'm just going a little further than that. 
right? Just to make sure, you always have to make sure. What happens if you take out the relay, somebody put it out, somebody put it backwards? It can fit both ways if it's four terminals. How do you make sure? Always make sure. Always make sure that the terminal that I'm jumping is going to power. Always make sure. Now let's say I'm going to the other terminal. I went to this one. This is ground. I went to this one. Is this connected to power? No, it's connected to the switch. That's the wrong one then, the jump. Can I jump this one? I go to this terminal, not knowing if it is the right one. I take my, my meter, and I go to this one. Sure enough, where is it connected to? Connected to the battery. This is the correct one. That's how you do it. It's not enough to just look at the symbols on the relay and turn it over. You have to make sure you are going to jump the right terminal, 30 to 87. If not, you are jumping this, less resistance, and you will fry everything. That's the way I will show you hands-on how to do it. But never, if you're not sure, never ever do it. You will, like I said, a lot of damage to computer boards. Don't do that. So, again, jump this one. Fine. I go. To, I make, this is connected to power. See through the fuses. It's connected to power. I should get 12 volts when I go through that. That's the correct method to do it. Thank you. And now one more thing about the alternator. Now, is it in this one or is it in this one? I believe it's in this one, alternator. The generator. You see this, first we have to give some DC to the regulator and the generator, even though it's an AC generator. We feed this, we feed all the injectors and everything, correct? Once we crank, we have to replenish this battery. We replenish it through this, right? And the generator replenishes all these when you remember you now right, right now you're in the run position you're replenishing the, the fuel injectors by the alternator the, the position sensors the modules the ignition control modules you're keeping alive all these things all these gadgets the body control module so in other words this generator the ac generator is going through a red wire a thick thick wire you'll see it coming through another thick wire red wire to the battery that's coming from the generator Okay, its its purpose is to replenish, to recharge the battery, but to keep the accessories going until this is correct. Okay, if I want to see, if I want to see if the generator is at fault, first I pay attention to the fusible link. I want to make sure that this has not opened up or melted. I go from here to the battery post, and I want to measure very low resistance. I don't want to measure high or open. That means this is open. And this is not the problem. You can don't assume that the generator and get a new alternator when it might be the fuse link or a big fuse. Okay, please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Moto. My my other one, Automa uh, Automotive Electronic Schematics from Joseph. And please, I like to get some views. I have a lot of minutes watched. I am very thankful for that. My minutes and watch went up. I need uh, maybe about, uh, I don't know, 1,400 hours more. Hopefully, I'll get it. I have a goal, a deadline, but thanks for watching. And I'll do one more about the computer.